after Neil's talks, I bring you back to Earth and tell you what you have to do <laughs> to actually have access to all these uh, beautiful resources that we have here at uh, CSES. I will simply go through the usual numbers. I want to give you an idea of what's going on uh, this year, in 2012. We have given out, uh, just for production work, 307 million CPU hours, and I'm talking just of Monte Rosa. And then we have granted one, uh, almost two petabytes of uh, this space, and we have 87 production projects on our systems. So uh, as usual, I want to give you an idea of what is, how do we, do we share these resources. Please note on the top of my slides that this is allocated, not used. And I stress this because this is not the final pictures when it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, meaning, when I give you this pie or well, this chart with the used and <laughs> with the use allocation, the actual use of uh, resources and not the, the resources that are allocated on paper. So the usual player, uh, we have the usual player, MPA, FFL, ETH, Zurich, uh, PSI, and a few others. And uh, I mean, this chart doesn't really change dramatically usually uh, over the years. This, is, uh, this actually change often as uh, dramatic changes because we have, a, uh, we have had a huge boost in astrophysics and, uh, um, and fluid dynamics, geosciences, uh, uh, okay, chemistry again. But as I said, please uh, keep in mind that these are the allocated resources per uh, research field and not what people are actually using. Just to give you an idea that, is, that, that the, the picture actually can change when you look at the real usual usage, I give you the, uh, the, um, the charts for 2011, where you see that, uh, uh, that I mean, okay, the institution doesn't really, doesn't really matter, but here the numbers are uh, really uh, different from what we, have, uh, uh, we give on paper. So actually what they use in the end might be much, might be bigger than what we give them, and the, the, those that they have the huge allocation are might use less than what we have given on paper. So probably next year I will give you the, the, the picture of the usage of uh, 2012. So I am always the one talking about the allocation schemes at CSES. This has not really changed. We have always the preparatory project, the development, and the production project. I added the co-design project that uh, Thomas was talking yesterday just because he said that these are very uh, application and scientific problems driven. So my suggestion is that if you really have an interesting problem, you should really grab Thomas. This is your chance to talk to him and to make him aware that you're also uh, there and you might have some interesting input to give. So I don't have the very beautiful picture that uh, Neil has on pizza <laughs> end. So I just put it there just to mention, I mean, these are the three uh, major systems. And then we have, as uh, uh, Neil has uh, beautifully um, shown, Pilatus, and, uh, and then the usual uh, visualization and pre and post processing. Because I, as I said, I'm going to tell you what you should do when you write your project. This is just a very, the usual refreshment of your memory. So the preparatory project are there, not only if you are a new user of CSES, but if you have new codes and new things that you want to do with us, you should simply come to us. And um, the development project and the production project, these are not really changed. These are the two next deadlines for the submission of proposals. So the very close one, it's uh, October 12th. And uh, all of you that have a project that is going to aspire already received my email uh, saying, remember that your project is aspiring and you should submit uh, if you are interested in a new proposal. And the next one will be May 11th. This is our web page. I just want to uh, recall your attention and the fact that uh, you see I try to be uh, to put there already deadlines until uh, 2014. So as soon as this allocation will be uh, closed, you will have the next one. And I try to put there the, the, the time steps so you are aware of what's going on. Because I know that you have the feeling that uh, it takes a little long, but there are several steps that we have to follow. And if, you, of course, we can still change this. And if we change any of those things, you will receive one of my emails explaining what's going on. So 
I try to be always very detailed in the subject so that I <laughs> try to recall your attention <laughs> before you go into the text, actually. So this is what, these are all information that are available on our uh, web page. So preparatory project, I really like these cartoons, so I keep using them all the time. We are not, yet, we are not anymore at this phase, actually, that, uh, they really have a, that they have a real mouse <laughs> that they want to use. But uh, as I said, please remind, uh, remember that the preparatory project are not only if you are a new user, but also if you have a new application and you, it's, we have a new system, so you might want to to port the application on the, on the new system, test it, and actually produce the data that you need to put in your uh, production project. And I give you all the link, okay? The, the, I give you other information, but I'm not going to mention all of them. Then we have the production projects. <laughs> so where we, uh, you are actually ready to go on, uh, on production. And uh, this is the regular description that we, are, we have on our web page, so I'm not going to go through this again. You more or less know what you have to do. But, and also the reviewing process is uh, unchanged for the moment. We have the technical reviews done here at CSCS. We have the two technical reviewers for a pool of uh, experts. And then in the, uh, in the end, we have this uh, panel uh, me, uh, committee of experts that they are uh, well, their task is to rank the proposals and then make a final recommendation. So now this is the important part that I want to stress. So what is that we want to see in your proposals? Actually, I'm recycling the, <laughs> the, the, the talk of uh, one of our former colleagues. So what is that we want to see in this proposal? So please, uh, uh, the request of uh, uh, the, for the total allocation units, how we call them now, has to be for one year. Even if you have a multi-year project, your request for resources still has to be only for one year. You have to tell us whether you need this space. You have to tell us whether you need a visualization and in which terms you need the visualization. Do you just need the system to run your visualization? Do you need support? So please try to be a little more detailed when you, when you write your proposal, because the more we know, the better we can help you. And then also for the pre and post-processing uh, part. What is an excellent proposal? Okay, I can't, I, I, it's uh, obvious uh, there has to be scientifically a uh, very uh, interesting problem, and, uh, but the, you have to keep in mind that it's important, the technical part is also very important because the, the, it's, uh, the scientific reviewers and the panel committee are looking at the technical part because for them it's important to know whether actually this project, uh, be, uh, besides being beautifully the, uh, on the scientific point of view, whether they can actually use our systems here at CSCS. So, you, when you, you have to just clearly justify your resources. You, we, are, we are evaluating the technical validity of your, of, your resource, of your project based on what you write there. So the better and the clearer are the data, the easier it is for us to follow your reasoning and to see whether this is correct or not, or whether you can do this or not. Just saying, I want this and I want that, is not sufficient, really. You have to tell us why you need this, uh, these, uh, these resources. We have to be able to use your number to make the maths. So if this is not there, it's for difficult for us to say this, uh, uh, this project is technically OK. And of course, your research has to be appropriate for what we are offering you. So this is, uh, this, <laughs> this is very uh, simple to give you ideas. So if you want to run on a certain number of cores, and you know that with this number of cores, it takes a, a certain, an H number of hours on Monte Rosa, then what you have to do is a simple multiplication. So you have to do, a, and, then, and you want to run this model n time, you, you calculate your CPU hours this way. You just n by p by h. And this is what you need. And same story for the disk space. So please, we don't ask you to, to, to discover the moon and give us a, how did you do that. We just ask you to be clear in the way of, you, in the way of uh, writing your request. 
we, we understand that you can not, not always you can really be uh, extremely precise and exact in your, uh, in, your, uh, in your request. And so we accept the estimates as long as we, as I said, we can follow you in your reasoning for what you are asking. What we really would like not to see anymore is having benchmark on something that is vaguely related to what you are presenting. And of, of, of benchmarks, they are totally unrelated, that they are downloaded from the web and simply put in the proposal. Because, the, I mean, you have to have an idea of what you need. When we ask you to do the benchmarks, it's not because we want to make your life miserable, but it's because we want to help you in asking for the right amount of resources. <laughs> so if you do the benchmarks properly, you will put in a proposal where you ask exactly what you need. And if you justify that, we need you exactly what you want. We give you exactly what you want. So you have to really be a bit thoughtful when you write your proposals. And of course, uh, the ma as I said before, if you write something like I normalize run times the versus core, you have to give us the, normalized fact the normalization factor so that we can follow, once again, your reasoning. So please pay attention to uh, when you write your te the technical part of your proposals. This is now for the, those that they have uh, uh, proposals that they have been accepted for two or three years because uh, but especially professors can submit proposals that they are longer, that they are uh, uh, for more than one year because we give the option or the option to actually have a PhD length proposal. So for those that they have to put the renewals, I mean, they are, uh, we have been a bit uh, light in this. So it's actually, I'll take responsibility for this. But now what we really want to see is Please, you have to state which are the goals that you have achieved from the original ones of your proposals already. If you haven't been able to use your allocation, which were the problems that you were encountering, could have, been, uh, have helped you in solving this problem. And then, once again, because this is a renewal, you have to write the, your resource request for the second year or the third year, and you have to justify again because you can ask for more. But you have to tell us why you want more and how you're going to use this uh, uh, larger allocation. And then, of course, if you have published papers or if uh, you have paper in preparation, you should definitely submit, uh, tell us about this work. The development project is basically the same story. It's just that develop, we have two kinds of development projects. In our mind, a development project shouldn't really require a huge allocation because you are developing something. We understand that you might want to try on a, big, uh, uh, on a lot of cores, so to have these special needs, but not an overloaded request for uh, allocations. So, we, have, uh, we give you the option to come to us with a development project and you can actually, and you will not go through, the, uh, through, the, through the, our reviewing process if your project is within a certain limit. All this information, of course, are, are on our web page. I'm not going to flood you with the details because they are all there. And you can always contact us uh, if, you, if you need. Now, this is a reminder that I want to give you because uh, we have always some difficulties for us about this. So you have project here at CSCS. I hopefully these are successfully project, successful projects where you are publishing papers. So please, I just quote a very, very famous sentence that I don't need to tell you from, uh, from where it is. This is one very small step for a user to write uh, that I was using CSES resources at the end of your paper where there is the acknowledgement. It won't make your paper longer, but this will be very important for us. So please, please, please remember to acknowledge us if you use our resources in your, uh, in your publication. This is very important for us. And this is why at a certain point, you always receive this email from me saying, hey, can you please send us the publication list? Because this, for us, is important to show that we are having project and we do research which is successful and is worldwide um, research. 
So before the comment, the question I want to, because you have seen that, uh, I don't have any slides about this, but because you have seen from, uh, from Thomas, first from Thomas and then from Neil, that we have a lot of resources, I would really like to stress the fact that if you have important scientific questions that you want to answer, and you need a, a lot of resources to answer this question, please do write a proposal, because it's really enough that you are clear in your statement, that you, you are clear in your, uh, in your uh, um, resource request, and we will give you what you need. And with this, I don't know, do you have questions or comments? <laughs> Yes, please. The usual player, uh, we have the usual player, EMPA, EPFL, ETH, Zurich, uh, PSI, and a few others. And uh, I mean, this chart doesn't really change dramatically usually uh, over the years. This, is, uh, uh, this actually changes often as uh, dramatic changes because we have, a, uh, we have had a huge boost in astrophysics and, uh, um, and fluid dynamics, geosciences, uh, uh, okay, chemistry again. But as I said, please uh, keep in mind that these are the allocated resources per uh, research field and not what people are actually using. Just to give you an idea that, is, that, that the, the picture actually can change when you look at the real usual, usage, I give you the, uh, the, after Neil's talks, I bring you back to Earth and tell you what you have to do <laughs> to actually have access to all these uh, beautiful resources that we have here at uh, CSES. I will simply go through the usual numbers. I want to give you an idea of what's going on uh, this year, in 2012. We have given out, uh, just for production work, 307 million CPU hours, and I'm talking just of Monte Rosa. And then we have granted one, uh, almost two petabytes of uh, this space, and we have 87 production projects on our systems. So uh, as usual, I want to give you an idea of what is, how do we, do we share these resources. Please note on the top of my slides that this is allocated, not used. And I stress this because this is not the final pictures when it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, meaning when I give you this pie or well, this chart with the used and <laughs> with the use allocation, the actual use of uh, resources and not the, the resources that are allocated on paper. So the 